So if you sell on Etsy, the holy grail pretty much is to rank as highly in search results as possible. And in this presentation today, I am going to show you exactly how to do it. The information I'm sharing today is directly from Etsy themselves. They trained me and I'm now sharing this information with you. So I'm going to tell you the exact things that you need to focus on in order to improve your search ranking, not only on Etsy, but also on Google as well. So I'm really excited to bring this to you. This presentation was uh, recorded on the 6th of November, 2019. So if you're watching this a lot later on, some of this may be not as relevant anymore, but it's absolutely up to date and relevant as of that date. And I go into detail about all of the elements that affect your Etsy search ranking, all of the things you can work on in order to improve your Etsy search ranking and your Google search ranking in order to help your listings get found and to make sales on Etsy. I've also put together a cheat sheet outlining all of the vital information that I share in this presentation. If you would like to get access to that free cheat sheet, head on over to createandthrive.com forward slash Etsy SEO, and you will get access to all of that information laid out nice and neatly for you so that you can keep referencing back to it as you're working on your Etsy shop and improving your listing quality which is the measure by which Etsy uses to decide on your search rankings. So that's createandthrive.com forward slash Etsy SEO to get access to that cheat sheet. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any further information that I am going to be sharing with you about how to improve your handmade business and make sure also to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and like what you see today. So let's get into the presentation. Okay, so let's get to it, shall we? Welcome to the presentation. Uh, today, we're going to be talking, obviously, all about Etsy SEO. And um, this is just a quick overview of what's going to be happening here, uh, what we're covering today. So we've got what is search, uh, an overview of Etsy search, uh, some pro tips for you. We're also going to be talking about Google search and ads, Etsy ads, briefly. And then at the end, we're going to have a little quick activity so you can kind of consolidate what you've been learning. Now, I'm going to be kind of in the corner of the screen. We're going to have the main presentation. I also have a second uh, screen over here where I've got the chat up. So if you um, don't already have the chat window up, you might want to bring that up because you can chat to each other, answer questions I might ask you and ask me questions throughout the presentation as well using that chat window. And I'm going to be checking it over here while we're going, <laughs> which is awesome. All right. Now, just be aware that uh, I am going to be focusing on the presentation during the presentation period. And then when we get to the end, we're going to have a nice Q&A session. So I might not be able to see your question as I'm going because there's going to be quite a lot of us in here. But if I can't get to it during the presentation, hold on to it and I'll try to get back to it um, you know, when we get to the Q&A section of the presentation here. Now, uh, we have a lot to cover, so I'm trying to get to keep this to about an hour, basically, and uh, cover everything that I can. Now, as I said, um, well, I should give you a little intro first as to who I am. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Jess Van Den. My ethereal shop, uh, my Etsy shop is called Ethereal. Uh, and I'm also the founder of Create and Thrive. So I opened my Etsy shop in 2008. It was a hobby and I did it for a year and a half as a hobby. And then in 2010, I went full time uh, with my Etsy shop and then, you know, branched out from there, have my own website now where I sell. Uh, in 2013, I started Create and Thrive, which is uh, where I help other makers like myself and like you learn how to turn your handmade hobby into a thriving, profitable business. So that is me. Uh, I was really excited when Etsy reached out to me about doing this, uh, working with them to present this information to you because I think it's super, super valuable and it's really awesome to get it direct from them, uh, direct from, you know, basically direct from the horse's mouth. Everything I'm going to be sharing today is information uh, that Etsy has given me to share with you today in this presentation on 
how to get found in Etsy search and Google search as well. So I'd love to know in the chat over there um, or over here, <laughs> tell me who you are and what your Etsy shop is. I would love to know who you are and what's your Etsy shop and what do you sell? What do you, what do you make? What do you sell? Please share with us in the chat so I can uh, have a bit of an idea of who's here and what everybody is up to basically. So I'll have a look at that now. We've got Kirsty from Kirsty Sharp Jewelry who makes handmade silver jewelry. You can hear me loud and clear. Excellent. We've got Cindy from Wonder What You Were, Home and Fashion Accessories, Pre Love Textiles, Tear Jewelry. Awesome. Hey, it's Bertie and Clementine, Lazy Girl Laundry. Shout out to my Thriver Circle peeps. Awesome to see you guys here. Fantastic, guys. Awesome. All right. So um, I might just keep the video off for this part of the presentation. I'll bring it back on when I do the Q&A just to stop it cluttering up the screen so you can really focus on what I'm talking about. So let's get cracking with that. Excellent. Ex oh, we've got heaps of people here. Brilliant. Lovely to hear, see you all. Okay, cool. So let's get on with it, shall we? All right, so put yourself in the mind of your customer. That is the number one thing I want you to be doing during this presentation today is putting yourself in the mind of your customer and really being aware of who they are, what they're going to be saying, uh, looking for, what they're looking for, what words they're going to be using throughout, you know, everything that we're doing everything that they're looking for, what words are they going to be searching for? That is the foundation of search, is putting yourself in the mind of your customer and making sure that you are, you know, using the right keywords and the right titles and everything else um, that you should be able to use those words for your uh, SEO in order to reach out to them. Okay, so next. Also think about what influences your online purchase behaviour because we're going to be covering... <clears throat> not just, you know, the text that you're using, but everything else that you're using to draw in those people and to get them basically into your shop. That's what this is all about, is to get people into your shop. So have a think about that for me. Like when you are buying online, I literally want you to put this in the chat. When you are buying online, what makes you click on somebody's item over somebody else's? What's the main thing that will influence you to choose one over the other? Tell me in the chat right now. I'd love to hear what it is for you. Yeah, so clear product photo. It's ethical, handmade and unique. The item really speaks to you with colour or style. I love that. Beautiful photos, good description, photo first and foremost, ethical and handmade. Awesome. How well the item suits my preferences. I like that. That's cool. Okay. Lots of photos from different angles, amazing photos. Oh, influenced if a friend's recommended it. Cool thing. All right. So, yeah, there's heaps of stuff that can influence your behavior, but I'm seeing some key themes here. Photos, uh, how well it's, uh, it suits your own aesthetic and, like, ethical handmade, like, that is what you're looking for. And some recommendations. Money. So, yeah, how much it's costing. Fantastic. All right. So, lots of stuff. So here's just a quick example of a shop. Um, you know, have a look at this as it's going through. What does that say to you when you see this shop? What are, what are some of the keywords? What, what are the things that jump out at you when you see this? Bright and fun, fun, bright, happy, colourful. Yep, a lot of colour. Consistent branding, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. How everything just looks beautiful together, it all works together, good photos, they're bright and colourful, absolutely. So this is just an example of a shop that has it all together. You know, the branding is on point, the photos are on point, it's cohesive and if, if you liked this sort of stuff, chances are you would click on this shop and that's the sort of stuff that we're going to be looking at throughout this presentation today, not just the nitty gritty but the overall Yes. Awesome. All right. So let's get on with the details. Discovery is what Etsy calls this phase of the buyer journey. So, you know, we all say maybe Etsy search or SEO, whatever. Their term for it is discovery. This is the discovery phase where people are trying to find you and trying to find what you do and what you create. So discovery is what we're going to be talking about today. And I have so much to, to 
throw at you. It's really, really awesome. All right, so let's get on with it. Um, we're going to be talking about, as I said, how to get found in your Etsy search, but also how to get found in Google search because there are differences and you need to be aware of those differences and making sure that you're, um, you're doing both things, both lots of things in order to get found, not only in Etsy search, but Google search as well. And then I'm going to touch briefly on organic search and ads um, towards the end of the presentation. All right, so the three keys here. So these are the three keys of search engine optimization or SEO. We've got keywords, product photography, and the customer experience. So I'm gonna be going into much more depth about these three keys to SEO today. And I'm gonna be outlining all, well, pretty much all of the things that Etsy, the Etsy algorithm uses to rank your items in their search. Now, of course, we don't, <laughs> we don't have the inside word from Google here, unfortunately, but we do know, uh, you know, Etsy knows a bit about this. So they've passed that information on to me and what really matters when it comes to your Etsy shop for Google search as well. So we're going to be covering that as well. All right. So keywords, product photography and the customer experience. All of these things are important. So here's our overview of the things that are most important. Number one, titles and tags. So obviously in the search results, you know, what you are using, the titles and tags must match the buyer search word or phrase. So items that don't match the buyer search word or phrase will not be included in the results. Seems obvious, but we're going to get more into this as we go along. We're going to cover attributes and categories because this, the information you provide in your attributes and categories actually is considered in Etsy search. It's basically like having extra keywords. So the things that you put in here are really important. And also you don't necessarily need to double up with things that you put in here in your tags and keyword and titles because they are being used by Etsy search as tags, which is really awesome. So it kind of gives you more options and more ways that you can get in front of people. We're also going to be talking about listing quality. So what is listing quality? Um, Etsy search algorithm considers how well individual items tend to do in search. So the quality of your listing basically comes down to how high or low it will rank in search. And this can change and does change over time depending on your um, your behavior, so what you do to your listing, but also buyers and potential buyers' behavior, people who are clicking on your uh, clicking on your listing, coming through to your shop. The more people who click on your thing in search, even if they don't buy it, the higher it will rank in search. And of course, if people do buy it, that affects the listing quality as well, and it will rank higher in search also. So we're going to be talking about those elements of listing quality. Product photography. Now, this is a big one. The number of photos you upload does not directly impact your item search placement, but using the 10 listing photos may increase your conversion rate. And as we were just talking about with listing quality, the higher your conversion rate, the better that that item will rank in search. The more it sells, the higher it will rank. So while your number of photos does not impact, you know, initially where your item shows in search, you know, if you have one photo uh, versus 10 photos, the person with 10 photos is not going to necessarily rank higher in search. However, you're probably more likely to make a conversion, which will mean that you will actually rank higher in search over time, right? So that is why stuff like that is important when it comes to your conversion and your sound. Lisa got a sound awesome. <laughs> All right, customer and market experience. All of this stuff affects your potential search ranking, your listing quality. So having good reviews, a completed about section, offering free shipping within the US, and having shop policies can all help your placement in search. So we're gonna go deep into all of these elements. So let's go into the details, shall we? All right, so let's look at keywords to start with. Now, just to clarify, a keyword is not necessarily a single word. It can be a phrase. So jewellery would be a keyword, but sterling silver jewellery is also classed as a keyword. It's a long tail keyword. It's a more specific keyword phrase. But when we use the word keyword, we're, we're talking about either single words or keyword phrases, just to clarify that. So looking at your title, you want a title that includes the exact keywords buyers would use to search for your item. Do not get fancy or cute here. This is not the place to give your items whimsical names. That is a waste of space. 
You can, if you want to give your items a whimsical name, you maybe can put it at the very end of the title or you can put it somewhere in your description, but you want to be using this very important real estate by filling it up with keywords that your buyers will be looking for when it comes to finding your item. It is as simple as that. Um, place the most influential phrases at the front of the title. So the thing that you think will be most likely to be searched for or the most uh, specific long tail keyword that you think will, you know, people will find your specific thing if they're looking for your specific thing rather than a more general or generic keyword because if you're using a more generic keyword, chances are you're competing against a lot more people, right? But at the same time, you don't want to be using a keyword that's so obscure that nobody's going to be searching for it. So you have to try to find a middle ground here. The, so the, the first few words in your title are the most important, so put the most important keyword there. Two to three phrases typically make for a good title according to Etsy. So they don't, they say, you know, you have, I think it's 180 characters, it could be 150, it's either 150 or 180 characters, um, but you don't have to use them all. Uh, use only the keywords that you think are the most important and then put the rest of them in your tags and also your attributes and categories, don't forget about those. So two to three phrases, they, they um, recommend that you separate them with commas so separating your keyword phrases with commas is what Etsy recommends. And um, like they said, the rest can go in your tags. Your tags, using a variety of specific descriptive keywords and phrases is what you want to do here. Uh, making sure that you are, again, describing the product. Describe the attributes of the product. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Uh, who would be interested in it? why would they be interested in it? Like a lot of you said earlier about like something's handmade and eco-friendly, making sure that you're getting those sorts of tags in there. So think about um, style, specific colours, textures, size, themes and motives, all, all of those things are really, really important. And also where possible, try to use variations in your titles and tags to increase the likelihood of getting found through different searches. Okay. Does anybody have any quick questions about that so far, about our titles and tags? Remember to use your attributes and your categories as if they are tags as well. So don't leave them empty, especially those of you like me who've been on Etsy for a long time. You might have old products that have been in your shop for ages and Etsy's added a whole bunch of like attributes and things lately so that if you... Uh, if you haven't gone back and actually edited those older products and added in all these attributes, go do it because you're basically losing out on potential tags that could help your, uh, your item get found in search, which is really, really important. And also use your stats to track which listings buyers are engaging with the most. Generally speaking, you want to leave at least um, 20, uh, 30 days after making a major change to see the, the effects of it. It can take up to 30 days for SEO changes to kind of filter through. So don't be going in and, and changing stuff on one listing too often. You need to kind of do your research and make the change and then give it time to actually work before you decide to change it again. And very importantly, when you're doing this sort of stuff, Focus on the, uh, the the products that are not doing so well. Don't mess with the ones that are doing well. Focus on, you know, it's really tempting to try to make your better products, your good products even better. But if they're already doing really well, maybe don't mess with that. Maybe go and focus on some of the products that aren't doing so well and making sure that you're trying to get those elevated in search before you worry about messing with the stuff that's already successful. Okay. So here's a few really interesting little tidbits of information for you. There's no need to use misspellings of words. Etsy search redirects shoppers to the correct results if they make a common mistake or typo. So that's really awesome to know. You know, if you've if you found that you had a misspelled keyword for five years, <laughs> you probably don't have to stress too much because Etsy has done, has sorted it out for you. Basically, try not to do it. But you know, they um, you don't need to actually use a spot to put a common misspelling in. I know people have done this in the past. Etsy will fix it for you. Uh, don't add titles and tags in multiple languages. 
And very importantly for people like me who sell jewellery, uh, this is true for regional spellings as well. For example, you don't need to include both jewellery and jewellery with the US and English spelling. Etsy will do that for you too. So that's pretty awesome to know. So you don't have the waste tags on those regional spellings. You also don't need to worry about plurals. For example, a search for diaries would still be matched with listings with the tag diary. So Etsy search is very clever. It kind of figures all this stuff out for you. And so you don't have to worry about wasting space in your titles and tags with these um, multiple versions of tags. It'll do it for you, which I think is awesome. All right. So let's briefly talk about, well, maybe not so briefly, talk about product photography. You have to use engaging, click-worthy photos, especially your first image. Your first, the thing to remember about your first image is the majority of people are searching on their phone. So if you're using the Etsy app or the Etsy website, you, know, you want to pull up your phone and you want to look at how your item compares to everybody else's. Does it stand out? Is it click-worthy? Does it jump off the page or does it just blend in with everything else? That is what you want to focus on because the better you can make that photo, the more click worthy you can make that first photo, the more likely someone is to click through to your shop. And as we said earlier, if they click through to your shop, that increases the listing quality of that particular listing, which means it will rank higher in search because more people are clicking on it. It's kind of a positive spiral. <laughs> the more people click on it, the higher it will rank, the more people will see it and so on and so forth. So you want to make sure that first image is bright and clear easy to see and enticing. Then with the rest of your photos, you encourage the purchase or the conversion. So that is kind of the key here. Make sure that first photo is brilliant and then use the rest of your photos to tell the rest of the story. Don't try to tell the whole story in the first photo. That's not the idea. What you want to do is entice people to look more closely. Okay, so here's some more information on your product photos. You want to display the product clearly, give information about the size, colour and materials. All of these things you should be doing in your description as well. But the more you can put it in your photos and make it obvious, the better. Because let's be honest, we all know we shop based on photos. That is the, the thing that really makes the difference. So you've got to make sure they're top class. Capture both the purpose and the feeling of the product. Help shoppers imagine the product in their lives and use your style shots. So you've got your main photo, which is your, you know, your initial photo, your primary photo, and then your additional photos can show the item, you know, the front, back, inside, outside, whatever it may be. And then these are a whole bunch of lifestyle shots that you can use. Your studio shot, lifestyle shot, scale shot, detail shot, a group shot, a packaging shot, and a process shot, okay? If you're stuck thinking, oh, what am I going to, you know, people often, I often see people saying, I don't know what to put in all those other photo slots, right? Here you go. There's seven different things right there that you can put in those photo slots, okay? So show a, a you know, show a photo of your packaging. Have a photo of you working in your in your studio, in your Etsy photos. You can do that. It's fine. It helps to, it helps to um, reinforce your, oops, sorry about that. It helps to reinforce your branding, okay? It helps people to fall in love with you and fall in love with your work. That's what this is all about. So don't be afraid to use those extra slots for these sorts of photos. And you can just have stock ones. You don't need to be, you know, you don't need it to be a photo of you making that exact item. It can just be a photo of you working in your studio in general. But showing a scale shot is a really, really crucial one. Okay, so showing how big or small the item is, uh, that is something I see a lot of people missing. And you might put the, the size in the description, but there's nothing like just showing the item, you know, being held or being worn or a, a cushion on a couch or whatever or artwork on a wall in a lounge room, whatever it might be, to just immediately show people the scale of, of the item and they can immediately decide if it's what they're looking for or not. Okay. So the customer and market experience. 
These are all things that will actually increase your listing quality. Okay. So that's why we're covering them. Getting great reviews will increase your listing quality and the quality of your shop uh, overall, but also the, the listing quality of your item, obviously, that has been reviewed. So just a few quick ways to get good reviews. Respond quickly to customer questions, but, you know, you need to sleep. Don't, don't be down too crazy with this. Um, I'm a big proponent of having work hours and working in work hours. So responding as quickly as is able for you. Don't beat yourself up if you can't be constantly on, uh, switched on. Um, do your best to accommodate a buyer's needs within reason and within reason of your policies. Build a good relationship from the beginning with a thank you message on purchase. This is one I added because this is something that I have found to be the number one thing that has helped my shop to get good reviews and to have good relationships with my customers is basically killing them with kindness right from the outset. So when I get a sale, I send my customers a detailed thank you message. It's like four or five paragraphs long. It is not short. And it just goes in depth about you know, why I'm so thankful they chose to shop with me, how they're affecting my life um, in a positive way. I even mention my kitty cats in there and, you know, and then I talk about in detail what's going to happen, you know, how long I'm, it's going to take for us to make their item, the fact we're making it from scratch just for them. I talk about then the shipping, you know, how long it's going to take to get to them. If they want to upgrade to tracking, I put, you know, an option in there. Remember, you know, it's not, you're reminding them of all the details. It's not, you know, if you get my free shipping, it's not tracked. If you want to upgrade, here you go. And then I finish off sort of saying, if at any time you want to talk with me, I'll get back to you within four, 24 hours. I'm excluding weekends. I actually literally say that I set expectations as to when I'm going to be communicating with them. So they're not, you know, if it's Saturday afternoon, they're going to be seeing that and go, oh yeah, she doesn't work weekends. She'll get back to me on Monday. So you're setting expectations. And then at the end, I give them a little, um, you know, if you want to find out more about me, here's my Instagram, get 10% off. Here's my mailing list sort of thing. So that is, when I made that change many years ago, that has been the number one thing that's affected my relationship with my customers because I'm immediately being a real person and I'm immediately extending a hand of, of kindness and uh, friendship to them. And so many of them write me back and say, oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you. We're so glad to support you, blah, blah, blah. And then if something goes wrong down the track, they're way more likely to be understanding and actually reach out and contact me rather than just opening a you know, opening a case with Etsy or giving me a bad review because they already feel like they know me as a person. So I think for great reviews, that is my number one tip is start the relationship off well with good expectations and everything will go well from there. Okay. The next one is offering competitive shipping. Now, this is going to be different for everybody. Obviously, if you are shipping to the US and you offer free shipping, you will get a boost in search results. We all know that by now. Um, this does not affect your search results in anywhere else. So if you're selling anywhere else, having free shipping uh, doesn't give you that boost, okay? Uh, you want to be thinking about how competitive is, is my shipping versus other people's, but also, we, you know, you have to cover that shipping cost. Don't undercut yourself. So just be aware of that. Completing your about section. This doesn't have to be hard. Literally just upload a couple of quick photos and write a paragraph or two about who you are, what you do and why you do it. And most importantly, a lot of people seem to miss this one, why I should care. Why should I care about what you do? Why will it uh, be a positive thing for me? So, to, uh, you know, share that with them in your about section as well. But don't overthink it. Just if you haven't got this completed, fill it in because having it completed is what matters when it comes to ranking better in your search, okay? So have it filled in. Having your shop policies completed. This is really important as well. You must have these completed to get the little extra boost in search. So just go through and make sure that they're all done. Uh, and, you know, if there's extra stuff, fill in the FAQ section. As far as I'm aware, that doesn't have any effect on search, but it's just really useful. And, um, yeah, having all of these things completed um, gives you a shop uh, a boost in the search. Uh, Chris, you just said, can you share how you add the option for track shipping after purchase? I literally just tell them I can send them an invoice for uh, okay. for the upgrade. So you can you can either you know add a thing on Etsy or you can just send them an invoice for the upgrade, and I'll do I do that. 
All right. So we've talked there about uh, Etsy search. Let's talk about Google search and some of the differences between them. We've got titles and tags. Similar to how search works on Etsy, Google will scan a listing's titles and tags to determine whether it's a relevant search query or not. Attributes and categories can also be scanned for keywords when Google's determining whether or not it's relevant to a search query. Now, this is the, diff the key difference. Etsy does not look at your item description when they're ranking you. They look at your titles, your tags, your attributes, categories. Google does. So this is where having your item description set up well is important because Google will search your item description to rank you. Okay, so repeat the most important keywords from a listing's title in your description, especially in the first 150 characters. This will help Google's system to see that the listing is relevant to a query containing these keywords. So you have those keywords in your title in your, and then also in your listing description. Now, don't just, don't write like it's a computer. <laughs> Try to work it into a sentence, okay? So whatever the, the keyword is that you had, say I've got um, oxidized sterling silver wedding ring, might be my, in my shop, it might be a keyword. Then in the first sentence on my description, I'm not just gonna literally write oxidized sterling silver wedding ring. I'm gonna say, this men's oxidized sterling silver wedding ring is perfect for the, you know, um, modern groom or something like that. So you're just going to take the keyword and put it into a, a human friendly sentence and do the same thing in that first 150 characters. So while it's not so important for Etsy search, it is very important for Google search. So make sure that you are doing that well. And you want to be doing this, um, you want to have unique descriptions. Now this is where it gets a bit tricksy if you're selling on Etsy and you're in website because you might be, if you should, if you're doing that, try not to have the exact same title and description, at least the beginning of your description. Because if you do, it's, you know, it could, it might come up in Google as duplicate content, which gets pushed down in rankings. Um, so try to kind of tweak it a little bit. So it's a little bit different in both places. Okay. So item description, your shop sections can help your SEO in Google. So basically Google will look at your shop section and then look at what's underneath that in, you know, internet uh, hierarchy. So that will, it'll go, okay, well, this is a ring, a wedding ring. It's in the category of wedding rings. Hey, that must be pretty relevant, right? So make sure that your shop sections are descriptive, not fluffy, ambiguous phrases. You know, for example, uh, homewares versus for your nest, like, or your nest, super cute. Google doesn't really know what that means. Are they talking about birds? <laughs> you know, so use really descriptive words in your shop sections. And you know, you can have a lot of shop sections. So try to break your stuff down as much as possible. I think I have like, I think I have all of my shop sections. I actually just redid them recently. So I have like four or five different like wedding ring shop sections. I've organized my wedding rings versus, um, I've got like oxidized ones, matte wedding rings, high shine wedding rings. Not only because when my customers see that, they're like, oh, well, I'm looking for a high shine wedding ring. I'll click on that category. But also uh, for search purposes, it is nice and nested, right? It's, it's really descriptive. This is high shine wedding rings is what is in this section. And then everything in that is a high shine wedding ring. And so you're boosting your search um, relevancy via that. Backlinks. This is another good one. Uh, so when other websites link to your shop or to your listing, this boosts your site's reputation and can have a positive effect on your Google search ranking. So we all know that there are dodgy people out there who buy backlinks. Don't do that. None of you are going to do that. Um, it's just good, you know, if you're getting featured on blogs or, you know, you have your own blog or other people um, or Facebook, wherever, if, if, if basically the more links pointing to your listing and to your Etsy shop, the better because Google will then say, well, people are, people are linking to this. It must be quality. So then it will get a boost in search results. So using backlinks is helpful for that. And your product photography, a few important keys here with this. It's reviewed by the search system. Use high quality images, avoid cluttered backgrounds and watermarks. 
Google does not like watermarks. So if you're putting watermarks on your photos, you're shooting yourself in the foot when it comes to Google rankings because it doesn't like watermarks. It will down list your ranking. Okay. So don't be putting watermarks on your pictures if you want them to rank well. So don't use words or phrases that are irrelevant to your item. We kind of briefly touched on this earlier, but let's just come around to it because it's a really important point. Don't use fluffy words. Don't use words that are not descriptive of your item. So, you know, if I'd, I have a necklace called, I don't know, uh, the Circe necklace is one of my necklaces. Nobody's going to be looking for a Circe necklace. They don't, they don't know what it's called. They are going to be looking for a wire-wrapped circle necklace, for example, because that's kind of what it looks like. So you want to be using those descriptive titles and keywords. Do not, as I said earlier, don't waste space on the fluffy things that don't actually um, matter when it comes to search. Again, let's go right back to the beginning. Put yourself in the mind of your customer. Literally think what words are they going to be typing in search and in what order in order to find what you are selling. That is what you need to focus on. What words are they going to be typing into search to find your item? So those are the things you need to focus on, absolutely. So writing original content, using keywords in your listing description, keeping the shop sections legible and specific, avoiding watermarks and cluttered backgrounds, and don't buy links, obviously. Okay. So let's briefly touch on Etsy ads here. I'm not going to go into the into too much detail, but just to clarify, uh, the promoted listings are shown at the top in the middle of Etsy search results. Google shopping ads are shown at the top of Google search results. So that's where the um, ads are being shown if you are using ads. And here's a few tips with ads if you choose to use them. Considering seasonality, so rather than, you know, some of you might just have all of your products switched on. You might want to save your money and only promote seasonal products like at this time of year, Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving type stuff if you're in the US. Um, you know, promote your most unique products because they're more likely to rank well and show up. Using concise titles will help them rank higher as well. Avoiding the watermarks again. Um, Google will not surface ads if they have watermark uh, images if they have watermarks on them. So literally, they will not show your item if it has a watermark in in the ad section. So that's a really important thing to know. Uh, experimenting with your budget to find out what works best for you, and using your stats to gain relevant insights. So give your campaign. This is kind of like SEO, right? You need to give it time. Give it at least thirty days before deciding you know what is what start small start you know with a dollar or two see how it goes um, start with you know your best products uh, you know show I know it sounds a bit weird but what I do or what I've done in the past is I've actually turned ads on for some of my best sellers because let's think back to listing quality remember what we were talking about earlier if something is um, getting clicked on more often that listing quality will increase in organic search, right? So if you're you're promoting the stuff that's already got selling well and showing up and people are clicking on it, it's kind of a win-win situation where that, that item is getting clicked on more often. Therefore, in organic search, it's going to be ranking higher, not just in the ads. So consider that when you are considering running ads. Okay, so here's a quick activity for you after all of that. This is an item from my shop. I've given you a few pertinent details. Two things. Number one, have a go at writing a good keyword rich title. Remember, two to three phrases separated by keyword, uh, separated by commas that are very descriptive of the item. What keywords would you be typing in to Etsy or Google search in order to find this item. And I'm also curious as to which image you would choose as the main image and why. So it's just a little exercise for you. Have a crack at that. What would you, what sort of title would you write and share with us in the group chat? Thinking about those words, what would you type into a search bar to find this item? So we've got simple black men's ring. Yep, that's awesome from Aisling. Nice one. 
Matte black wedding band, nice. Unusual wedding ring, I like it. Recycled handmade black wedding ring. So we're seeing all of these phrases coming through. Wedding ring, the colour, the fact that it's um, made from recycled silver. Yep, custom size black wedding ring. So remember, you want to be using two to three phrases. So how could you kind of get more information into that title while having a couple of different keyword phrases in there? So most of those ones you guys have shared so far would be like one of the keyword phrases. Oxidized sterling civil wedding ring. Yep, that's pretty much I think what I have. <laughs> and then I also have like black or grey or dark grey or gunmetal, like specific colours um, that describe the colour because it's, it's kind of black but it's also kind of grey, it's kind of gunmetal. So you can kind of play around with those different variations on the, the term so that people find it easier to find. Cool charcoal, that's a nice one. Yep, black men's wedding ring, wide matte charcoal silver band. Love it. Matte black wedding ring, comma, recycled sterling silver, comma, custom sizing. Yep, excellent. Black wedding ring, comma, oxidized sterling silver wedding band, comma, custom size black ring. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. So, look, there's so many things, but you're, we're all coming up with slightly different variations on it. Some of them are fant absolutely fantastic. Haha, -ha. see, that's a good question, Lisa. But if it's a men's wedding ring, why have a pick of a woman's hand on a non wedding ring finger? Because at the time when I took that photo, that's all I had to <laughs> So, this is a, this is a case of, of working with what you've got. Um, I think in most of this is one of my kind of earliest wedding rings. Um, in most of my listings, I managed to rope my husband in to, you know, have taking a photo on his hand. But sometimes you just got to work with what you got. And at that time, I was like, I just need. I just need a scale photo that kind of gives you an idea of the size of it on a hand. I actually have quite big hands for a woman as well. So, but that's an excellent question, Lisa. That would be the sort of thing where you go, I probably want to update that and I probably, you know, should have a, a better one. And the photo here where it's with um, a women's wedding ring set, that's actually one of my customers' photos. So this is another cute one as well. <laughs> on the positive side it maybe one one for me and my husband brilliant yeah and that's the thing like I market this as a men's wedding ring I wear one of these rings literally on that finger that is in that photo I have a ri that ring on my finger that I wear all the time so there you go um but yeah if your customers send you like if customers upload Oh, I love what Kirsty just said. I saw it as hinting it didn't have to be a wedding band. That's a really good point. If customers upload photos to your reviews, you can put them in your listings, people. So if they if they upload a particularly nice one, um, because because they've already uploaded it to Etsy, they've basically said, here it is, I've made this public. So you can then take that picture and put it in your listing uh, to fill up some of those extra slots and show it in real life. If it's a quality photo, obviously, um, or if your customer is sent, like this one was sent to me by my customer just via email or convo or whatever. And then I asked them, Hey, that's such a beautiful photo. Can I use it in my shop as a listing photo? And they said, yes. So that's a great thing to do as well. So, Oh yes. Main photo. Which one would you guys pick as the main photo here? I should have numbered them for you. Sorry. <clears throat> Middle photo of the main image. Top left, the customer one, middle photo, lots of middle photos, middle or top left, top left, middle, yep. So the interesting thing here, and this is something to consider, and I see people doing this sometimes, um, the photos where it shows multiples, think very Yes, think very carefully about using a photo like that as a main image because the main image should represent the, the thing that the person is getting. Those additional photos with multiples are just kind of style shots, you know, showing what the ring, like a couple of the rings look like together. It's just a little bit interesting, but you don't want to confuse them into thinking they're getting three rings, right? So, yeah, stick with the, um, the one photo. I love what Krista said about the main photo. It shows the angles, unique styling and a sense of style. Yeah. So, oops, I didn't mean to click that. So that the middle photo is the main image I use and have used for many, many years. Um, this, this particular ring actually got in the Etsy Design Awards a couple of years ago as a finalist. And I think it's because of that photo, because it is unique and different 
And even though I took similar photos with some of my other rings, there's some, just something about that particular shop that worked. Uh, and that's, it's always interesting and frustrating, isn't it? When you, you take a photo and it's like, that's perfect, but you can never seem to really <laughs> replicate it again, uh, which is frustrating. So yeah, awesome work, everybody. That's fantastic. So you definitely got the clarity there about, um, about the keywords and titles and things like that. So let's move into question and answer time here. Uh, I'll turn my video back on. All right. So who has questions for me? Please throw them in my direction and I'm happy to answer them for you. Uh, about anything we covered in there, um, I do want to let you know just, just briefly, we're going to come back to this slide, but I am going to put together a cheat sheet on the, the details of this. I haven't finalised it yet because I wanted to take any questions uh, and any details that didn't come out before. The, so basically, you guys are helping me here uh, with this. If there's any particular details or tweaks or questions you have for me that clarify anything here, I'm going to add that in as well. But I'm going to put together a, a free cheat sheet of this information and I will send it out to you. Just go to this um, createandthrive.com forward slash Etsy SEO, pop your email in and I will send that to you once it's finalised sometime in the next few days. Uh, so yes. All right, so here we go. Question about duplicate content from Cass. At the bottom of each listing, I have a large paragraph about made order info, shipping info and the handmade process. I'm wondering if I should slightly tweak this in each listing so it's not duplicate content. Um, Cass, I do exactly the same thing. The key is that first 150 characters Okay, so especially with Google search, that first paragraph, as far as I know, now I'm not a Google search expert, however, as far as I'm aware, as long as that first paragraph is unique and you have um, unique keywords, phrases, sentences in that, I think it's okay because that's the most, um, that's what Google looks at as the most important piece of information, right? So that is what we want to worry about, not the additional content because that, that, you know, I think that extra content is really, really important for people to know. And I do exactly the same thing. So that would be my, what I would think about that from my knowledge. Uh, Jill, we don't, if we don't offer free shipping, I have heavy product or pottery. Will we shop and search? You will absolutely shop and search. Like don't get so stressed about the free shipping thing because it's only a small part of the overall uh, overall algorithm. So think about everything I just shared with you today, your titles, your tags, your attributes, your categories, um, your listing quality is affected by also your about page being filled in, your policies being filled in. Um, all of those things work together. You know, if people are clicking on your listing, if people are purchasing your listing, literally all of those things go t into Etsy deciding where to rank your product. So the, the free shipping thing is only a small part of that. Okay, so if you can't offer free shipping, you can't offer free shipping and that's fine. You will still show up in search. It just might not be quite as high. There might be a little difference between where you could potentially show up if you offered free shipping versus didn't. And remember again, I don't know if you're, you're just selling within the US, but it's only within the US. It doesn't affect it in other countries. Evermore, I've seen a lot of people focus on storytelling in their description. For example, who doesn't remember baking with their mom in the kitchen? Create new memories with these, uh, those you love with this apron set. Mm. Is this something that should be in the first paragraph? Not necessarily. It depends on how well you weave your keywords into it, right? So if you are weaving your keywords into this little story, it can absolutely be the first few sentences. But if it's a bit fluffy and it doesn't mention the keywords, then put it a bit further down and make sure that those first few sentences are keyword rich. Uh, again, this is important for Google search rather than Etsy search because Etsy search doesn't really care about your description, but Google search is important as well. So yeah, with that first, what you've written, I wouldn't use that because you're not putting the keywords as the very first sentence. You could rephrase it, um, like more like this, this, uh, this floral patterned 
apron set made with uh, eco cotton, blah, 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 will help you create new memories because who doesn't remember baking with mum in the kitchen, right? So reorganize it so that the keyword phrases are at the beginning and you can weave them into the story. In a perfect, yeah, oh, this is frustrating. In a perfect world, I'd list items in two sections. <laughs> for example, necklaces and also say seaweed collection. Any tricks for cross linking within the shop? Yeah, this is frustrating. I really wish Etsy would allow us to list in multiple sections, but they don't. So forget about the seaweed collection, use necklace. Like um, you want to, again, remember you try to use those, unless they like literally look like seaweed, that might be, <laughs> might be something you can use, but try to focus on those descriptive terms and phrases first, making sure that your sections are descriptive. Again, thinking about the sort of keywords that Google would be, or Etsy even, would be using. Oh. Yeah, you stuck to item types rather than collections. Absolutely. So basically, you just, you can put your collections in your description. Like, just say, this is part of the series collection somewhere in your description. Um, because you might be talking about that in your marketing, right? So when you're launching a new collection on in, you know, Instagram, email, whatever, you might say, hey, this is my new seaweed collection. Blah, blah, blah. You, could put, you could put it at the end of your title potentially, like seaweed collection if you wanted to. Uh, it's if you want to use that space if, is what I'm saying. Like it might, it, it might be better used with a more, um, a keyword that's more relevant. So I'd probably write crosslink. Yeah, so what you want to do is, in your description, link to your, the earrings. So in your description for your necklace, because while Etsy doesn't allow outside links, it allows inside links. So if you put if you put in your item description for the necklace, if you put uh, check out the matching earrings here and put a link, it'll have be a live link to your earrings in your shop. So do that. That's a really important thing to do when you have uh, matching things or a collection of things. Make sure that you cross link. Yeah, <laughs> it is, but it's, it is the way to do it. So you want to be doing that um, cross-linking. It's nice when you have a different shopping cart software that kind of does it automatically or you can put it in, but, or you can put multiple uh, links in there, but that's the best way to do it is to put uh, the cross-links in for the specific things. All right, any more questions for me, lovely people? I'll just scroll back and make sure I haven't missed any. I think the most important thing here is that it's complex, but it's not rocket science. Um, there are all of these different elements that go into your listing ranking and you can only do the best you can do. You know, having your shop fully fleshed out, looking professional is very, very important because Etsy will take you more seriously in listing rankings and in shop rankings. So make sure to get all of that stuff done. Make sure to have an about section filled in, your policies filled in. Make sure that that's all looking nice, okay? Have a nice banner, a quality banner. Have you know, a profile photo and a logo that are on brand. Um, all of this stuff matters when it comes to people's purchasing behaviour and the more conversions you make, the higher your rank in search. Okay, so you want to do all you can to ensure that your shop is ranking highly in search because it is professional and put together. Okay, Leanne, I've read numerous times that your tags should be in exact same order as your title. <laughs> Does this really make any difference? Um, do you mean the words within the tags like uh, oxidized jewelry or, you know, sterling silver jewelry or jewelry sterling silver? Is that the sort of thing you mean? Okay, yeah. As Etsy, from what they have taught me and I've passed on to you here, they say, make sure that the keywords are written as your, as your customers would enter them in, okay? So I think it does have somewhat of an effect if you have the keyword written in the right order. But I think the most important thing is that you have the right keyword. In other words, you have the right words there. So... I wouldn't overly stress about this too much. Just, just try to think naturally what would people type in? Like, like what I just said there, uh, would people type in sterling silver ring or would they type in ring sterling silver? 
I would hazard that 90% of people would type a sterling silver ring because that's how you would say it in language, right? So just try to create titles and tags that are kind of proper grammar <laughs> and said in the way that people would expect them to be said uh, and do your best with that. But I think the most important thing is that the terms are there uh, within the right keyword. Again, remember when you're doing your titles, uh, if you're separating keyword phrases with commas, then that's going to be seen as a keyword phrase. Okay, so use those commas in the right places to separate out um, actual keyword phrases. And some of you had some really great examples of those earlier on where you sort of put chunked different different types of um, keywords that people might be looking for in, in different keyword phrases. Awesome. Um, all right. <laughs> Nothing worse than a badly placed comma. Eat shoots and leaves. Have we all read that? Is it Funken Wagner? The classic grammar book. That is... Um, that is a fantastic book. I remember reading that back when I was at uni because I did a whole subject on editing <laughs> in my, in my uh, arts degree. So that was a great book. You've got a no results found page for the URL, greatandthrive.com slash Etsy SEO. I literally just set it up before this. So if it's not working now, it will be working very shortly after it. I did test it, so I don't know why it's not working, but I'll double check that um, and get back to you guys. I can't get back to you once I'm gone, I'm gone. But um, <laughs> it will be there. So um, hopefully it will be working if it's not working right now. Thank you for telling me. So I'll go double check it. Any more questions? Lovely people, ha happy to answer them for you. That's why I'm here. As I said, remember for those, I can see a whole bunch of new people here. So hello to all of you. If you've missed some of the presentation, I will be um, publishing a replay on my YouTube channel and on my podcast. So YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Jess Van Den. And my podcast you can just find over at createandthrive.com. If you're not already subscribed to that, please do. I have an episode every week where I share um, it worked for Lisa. Awesome. Maybe too many of you are trying to access it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I do a weekly podcast for those of you who aren't aware. Um, and I interview make successful makers. And I also just do solo shows where I share stuff from my 10 plus years running a handmade business. No, it's been longer than that now. 11 years, my goodness gracious me, um, of running a handmade business, especially an Etsy shop as well. So I, I teach a lot of stuff about that. I'll cut off here. All right, any last questions? I'll get another minute or two before we wrap up. Happy to answer anything. Um, if you weren't here at the beginning, if you have any quick questions. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Evermore just said thanks for 10 years. And congrats on 10 years. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Thanks. And I've been, by the end of this year, this is, 2019 as of like January next year I will have been self-employed for 10 years which is I think an even bigger milestone so I'm really looking forward to celebrating that you're all very welcome uh, I was just really really happy to be able to bring you this information directly from Etsy themselves you know uh, there's there's so much out there and so much information flying around about Etsy search and what's um, what works and what doesn't work and a lot of speculation. So I just want to reiterate that everything I shared in this presentation today is literally directly from Etsy. Um, you know, they put us through a training program and, and, and gave us this information to share with you. So yeah, I just, I'm really happy to be able to bring this information directly to you because I think that's going to make a big difference knowing that it's relevant and knowing that it's relevant now things will change, you know, they might change things a year from now and it might affect how search works but what you want to do oh that's the other link i wanted to give you um where is that i actually have a printout over here as well with speaker notes but let's see if i can find it you've probably most of you been there before i can't remember the exact link off the top of my head but it's basically the etsy search um oh, i don't think it's not in these these pages oh yeah the ultimate guide to Etsy search that's what it's called um, so literally just go just type that into Google the ultimate guide to Etsy search it's a page on Etsy that they update 
uh, whenever they change anything from uh, whenever they change anything about the Etsy search algorithm, they update that page with the information. So the ultimate guide to Etsy search is what you want to look for and it's a page on Etsy itself. So if it's, you know, somebody else using that phrase, it's not, uh, go to, to Etsy themselves and that will always have the most relevant up-to-date information about their search algorithm. Oh, <laughs> so glad you listened to the podcast ever more and you enjoy them. Oh, Lisa, thank you so much. That's lovely. Yeah, I also have another podcast, which is a collab podcast with a couple of other maker teachers like myself called The Business of Making Podcast. If you don't listen to that, you can head on over and listen to that as well. Um, and we basically, it's a little bit more irreverent than my podcast. It's basically the three of us having a chat every week about something to do with handmade business. Uh, and it can get a bit a bit crazy at times, but we have a good time and we uh, hope our, our listeners listen to it as well. <laughs> Yeah, I, it is fun. It's a really fun thing to do. Um, I love doing my own podcast, but the business of making is a whole other level of fun and we uh, we get into it as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, if you haven't already, head on over to grantthrive.com forward slash Etsy SEO, pop your email in and I will send you that free cheat sheet with the, the, the details and highlights of the presentation today. So you've got all of these little details, you know, the things about Google not showing your photo if you've got watermarks and the fact that you don't have to put misspellings in uh, to your tags or regional spellings. You know, those are all little details that you might not have been aware of, but that can help you to make sure that you're not wasting space in your tags with irrelevant tags that don't matter. So I'll have all of that information in there for you. Uh, thank you all so much for coming live. It was really, really fun uh, to chat with you all today and um, I hope to see you around in my ecosystem at some stage <laughs> shout out to all my thriver circle members I'll, I'll obviously see you in in the membership community um and if you don't already follow me on instagram hit me up at create and thrive on instagram and let me know you know if you want to dm me on instagram i'd love to know like your number one takeaway from today or just share it with me here what's your number one takeaway the number one thing that you learned that really is going to stick in your head or that you're going to go work on now and then you're going to update. What is the kind of thing that went, oh, I didn't know that or, oh, wow, I can change that really easily and it will have an effect on my um, search rankings. So let me know what that number one takeaway is because I think ha kind of thinking about it and really clarifying that for yourself can be incredibly useful. Uh, and also make a note. Make a note in your diary or on Asana or Trello or wherever you, wherever you keep track of things. Uh, make a note to keep, look out for that cheat sheet and also make a note of whatever that aha thing was. No fluff in titles, use keywords. So, so important. That's a really good one, Lisa. And kind of turn it into a little bit of a mantra for yourself when you are working on your SEO, whether you're creating new products, um, whether you're updating old products, using those key learnings is really, really valuable because I want you guys to all succeed. I want you all to do well. And remember that I think another important thing, just briefly, remember that keywords, titles, tags, they're all really important. But you can have the best titles and tags in the world, but if your photos aren't any good, no one will click on it. You can have the best tiles and tags in the world, but if you don't have good policies or an about page, people will be a bit more hesitant to buy from you. Your tiles and tags can be the best in the world, but if you don't have photos that clearly illustrate the, you know, product itself, people will be less likely to convert and buy from you. So it's a whole ecosystem, right? Um, titles, tags, those things are very important. But you have to look at it as a whole ecosystem, your shop. You have to look at the whole picture, your branding, make sure things are cohesive. And the more that you can elevate your entire shop and the entire look and feel of your shop, the better your conversions will be. And the better your conversions will be, the better your shop will rank and it will be that positive upward spiral. So every little thing that you can improve on will make a difference to your success on Etsy. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I really appreciate you being here and uh, coming and, sh and learning with me today. 
So I will catch you all hopefully elsewhere online, uh, again, at Create and Thrive on Instagram, or you can follow me on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Jess Van Den, and I share videos there a few times a month. So this is me signing out. If you have any follow-up questions, again, hit me up on um, DMs in Instagram, and I'll try to help you out with those. Have an awesome day or evening. Good luck with your Etsy shops and bye for now. And that's it. I hope you found that really helpful and it's given you lots of ideas on how you can improve your Etsy and Google SEO to make sure that your listings are ranking as highly as possible in search. And remember to get that free cheat sheet, head on over to createandthrive.com forward slash Etsy SEO and get your pause on that so that you can use that to reference while you are working on improving your listings. I'm Jess Van Den and I'll be back again very soon with another video that will show you exactly how to improve your handmade business. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.